Hello and welcome to another tutorial from tipsquirrel.com. Quite often when I talk to people about Photoshop I'm told they've tried it but they didn't understand it. It was just a bit daunting when they first opened it up, so they gave up. So in this tutorial I'm going to do a beginner's guide and more specifically look at the work area. Now there's four main areas in Photoshop starting with the large area in the middle. This is where you'll be doing most of your work be it a simple design like this, the cover of this screencast, maybe a photo photograph, or indeed a blank canvas, ready to start your very own creation. As you saw, these can be of any shape or size. Next, let's go over to the right-hand side and look at these panels. These gives you options and information about your document and the tools that you're using. For example, in the workspace I'm in now, I've got a navigation panel, a swatches panel, and a layers panel. Now these can be moved around and I can shift them and resize them. And I can have all kinds of different workspaces. Now at the top here you can see that I'm using the Essentials workspace. I could, if I wished, use the Tippy workspace, my own workspace that I prefer. Now, there's not a lot of difference in this particular instance. I've added a history panel and some more panels down the side that can be brought out should I need them. You could go and use the pre-made workspaces if you wish. There's one here for photography, for example, or maybe even a design workspace. But for now, I'm going to stick with the essentials workspace. Now these navigation if I zoom in, can let me have a look around. Swatches, of course, I can choose the different colors. And down in the layers, which is one of the most important palettes, I can see all the different layers that I've used to make up this very simple cover. And I can turn them on and off using the eyeballs. To create a new layer, all I have to do is click this icon down the bottom, and hey presto, I've got a new layer which I can do whatever I wish on it. Now I could go on and on and on about all these different panels, but I'm not going to here. That's not what this is designed for. Okay, let's go up to the next area of interest, which is the menu. Now they, you'll find hundreds of different options in the menu that comes with Photoshop, and you're welcome to go and have a little bit of a fiddle around. Some you may be interested in having a little bit of a play, are in the filters. Try running some of them, see what happens. But be careful, don't go too overboard. Now below the menu, you'll see this other menu. And this may look slightly different when you open it. You can see that this icon here reflects this icon here, which is actually the one that's selected. Now in this case, it's the Move tool. If I click on another one, let's say this elliptical marquee tool, you can see that it changes up on this sub-menu. Um, to give me other options for the marquee tool. Now this is called a contextual menu because it depends which tool you choose as to what options you get, and it's very handy. Whenever you're playing about with any of the tools, always have a look up at the top and see what's going on. Now I could quite easily go on for a good few hours talking to you about which or uh, what the, each of these tools do but I'm not going to do that. What I will do is point you in the direction of just a few. First off, let's go over to my dots here. And now I've got on the move tool, now that does exactly what it says. I've targeted layer two here, which is my blue dot, and I can move that around. If I target my red dot, I can target that and move that around. So that's the move tool. If you see a little arrow down the bottom of one of these uh, tools. That means there's more. If you click and hold down, you can see that I have a rectangular marquee tool and I can just go around and select different areas. So quite an important tool, that one too. The next one you want, might want to play with, especially if you're using CS5, I'm just gonna nip over to the photo, is these ones down here, the spot healing, healing brush, and the patch tool. Now in spot healing, you have new content aware, which you may want to have a play with. That needs to be 
clicked before you start playing with it. Now the content aware, if I get hold of my zoom tool and click and zoom in, you can see this young lady's got a bit of a blemish. And using the spot healing tool, I can go in and click on that and away it goes. Very handy indeed. I'm going to use my navigation panel just to go around and get rid of a couple more blemishes. So that's those ones. And um, like I say, have a bit of a fiddle, especially if you're new to the Photoshop because they're really quite clever. With the patch healing tool, highlight it or select it, take that selection elsewhere and it takes the new part, pops it down and blends it all in together. I'm going to press Control and D to deselect there. Now I'm going to go over to my painting and then I'm going to choose my brush and choose the brush tool and on a new layer I can start painting. Now if I come up here I can change the size of the painting brush. In this case I'm using a circle and I can start painting away. Click on the swatch to get a new color and click again and I can start painting again. In CS5 you might be interested in the mixer brush tool. Let's go and choose a new brush. Let's click this nice fan brush and you can start mixing them in. Now in this case I'm using the mouse. I'm not getting a lot of control for real control. You should really you be using a Wacom tablet or a graphics tablet of some kind that allows you to use the brush and uh, to tilt it etc. Okay so that's the painting. Now I'm not going to worry about stamping and all that kind of stuff. You might be interested, especially if you're coming from a photography world, you might be interested, we will be interested, I should imagine, in these tools here, which are the dodge tool and the burn tool. If you're used to working in a dark room, you'll know all about dodging and burning. So let's go and dodge, and let's dodge just around her mouth a bit here. Oh, daisy. <laughs> okay. Perhaps a bit stiff for this particular, <laughs> making it a bit orange. Okay, let's burn it down a bit now. Okay, so not a good example really, was it? Really didn't do it justice at all. Okay, so that's dodging and burning. And uh, now the pen tool. <laughs> If you want to work with the pen tool, that's fine. It can be a little bit daunting, the pen tool. I would suggest finding a tutorial on using the pen tool um, because it's going to take far longer than this screencast to tell you about it in any great detail. There are some great tutorials out there. Go and find them. It is a great tool. Okay, finally, the uh, shape tool, the custom shape tool got all kinds of shapes down here that come with Photoshop and you can see that you can just go and make the shapes quite happy. Let's go on a new layer and let's create the shape this time. There we are and we're creating lots of umbrellas but we can choose whatever we wish. This is going to be a messy isn't it? Um, let's go for this ribbon. Okay change the color perhaps. Oops. brown. There we go. And so you've got all kinds of shapes there too. And then finally the hand tool. If we go back to our photograph, the hand tool, dear, I really didn't do it just as well, did I? The hand tool, if you're zoomed in, uh, your hand tool you can click and just drag around to a new place. Now there's lots of shortcut keys uh, that you can use on the, the keyboard. Let's go over to the move tool again. Well, that's going to move the actual picture around, which we don't want to do. All we want to do is just navigate around. Well, first keyboard shortcut you should know is to press the space bar to get the hand and then you can move around your document quite freely. And then when you let go of your space bar, you go back to whatever tool it was that we're using. In our case, it was the move tool. Okay, that's a quick overview of the anatomy of Photoshop. I hope that I've given you the confidence to go in and try something. If not, then why not give me a shout? And I'll happily answer any questions about any part of Photoshop. If 
I don't know the answer, then I probably know somebody that does because there's lots of great writers already working for tipsquirrel.com. And you can see a list of the names under the Photoshop nut there. Um, and they all give their time and their experience free of charge. And I'm very grateful to them for it.